Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And this week we are talking about, well, something really fun. Very fun. Threesomes. It can be very fun. Foursomes, more sums. We had a listener request to talk about how we handle setting boundaries and dealing with all of the, the, the details of trying to figure out how to introduce actual other people into a heretofore monogamous sexual relationship? It's a great question. And one that is so, it really strikes right at the heart of planning is everything. <laughs> planning <laughs> is communication everything. Is communication everything. is everything. Yeah. If you want to play outside of the, uh, the typical rules of monogamy, which tend to include no, z- absolutely zero extracurricular sexual activity, as well as typically extracurricular emotional activity, mm-hmm. if you want to play in the space outside of there, well, in my opinion, it can work. But it also always introduces, yeah, dynamic <laughs> um, it's, it's, stuff. Um... It introduces stuff. That's why well, we like it. It introduces new things. Yeah. So what your relationship has been and has experienced before, it hasn't experienced this. By definition, it hasn't yet. Which is why it's so hot. Which is one why of the exciting so things ex- about exciting. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So a recent study, well, fairly recent, um, Justin Lemler ran that big study about American fantasy, sexual fantasy, and the number one sexual fantasy held by Americans found in that study, um, which was like a 4,000 person study. So it's a decent size. Um, Yeah. Multi-party sex, Mm -hmm. more than one person. Sure. It's hot. It's exciting. It's interesting. And it can be like playing with fire. If you don't take seriously the fact that you are introducing new things into the relationship, you're introducing questions. It's not the person so much as it's the questions that you may not have ever needed to explore. So when I was making notes to answer this particular request, what I had was this long list of questions, questions that I ask clients when they want to play in this space, when they want to open up this part of their relating, questions we asked each other, yeah, questions we, we learned the hard way, some of them. The questions are key because you're introducing an unknown into your relationship some of those unknowns you won't know until you get into it, but a whole, whole lot of those unknowns you can answer for yourselves before you get into it. Okay. So let's get into it. Um, the question asker, the listener um, asked right up front, how do we deal with boundaries? And I think that that's great. And it shows that there is some clarity of thought here around what it is that is at the heart of it. And that is describing and discussing with your partner what it is you need in order to continue to feel safe and loved and held in this relationship. I did want to draw attention, though, to the fact that the the way that the question was worded assumes a certain amount of heteronormativity. So what I mean by that is the the person in question was talking about one, one guy, his girlfriend, they are looking to potentially play with one or maybe a couple, one one other person or maybe a couple. And they're thinking about it from the perspective of maybe girl-girl play, but she's not sure whether she's interested in seeing him play with another woman. Um, he thinks that he may be interested in seeing her play with another man. This right off the bat introduces questions of, yeah, let's get into talking to our partner about what what gender and what um, our assumptions about orientation yeah. are, because sometimes we haven't necessarily outed ourselves. Yeah, you can learn a lot about each other raising these issues and talking about them. And it's also completely 
possible and can be really, really fun to play sexually with people who aren't necessarily of the same orientation of you. you your orientation does not necessarily define what sexual play you like. There are straight oh, yeah. men who enjoy having sex with men. There are straight women who enjoy having sex with women and don't, con that doesn't, that doesn't deny their identity, their identity of their orientation. At so yeah. I just wanted to say that up front because so frequently when we talk about threesomes, we have that instant image in our mind of one dude wanting to, to play with two girls. And like, this is, this is just the, the image. And that is not actually how it's gone for us. It is not. In general. Um, and I think that when we when we always imagine it the same way, we forget that there are actually a lot of different dynamics at work. It, anytime you have the, the number three in a situation, especially, yeah. three is a dynamic number. It's a triangle. Yeah. It introduces jealousy. So I want to do a follow-up episode. I'm going to say two. We will address the aspects of jealousy in an episode coming up. Yep. Because We're not jealousy touch is my here. specialty, and I can do a whole episode. I could probably do a hundred episodes on jealousy. So we're going to touch on that separately. So yeah, the questions let's... were around boundaries, and one of the things is boundaries around what? What? And I don't think we talked about this before we got here. What do you mean, have sex with? Yeah. Okay. So right? <laughs> first question: What is sex? Yep. What does it mean to? do a swap, soft swap or full swap. These are terms that are tossed around in the threesome world. And, and soft swap generally is understood to mean we are open to having sex with everybody in the same room and with some set of sexual activities, which should be described in detail beforehand so that there can be an agreement. A full swap would involve more, it, there might be separate rooms um, where where different couples break off or different, could be more some uh, as well, but different couples break off <laughs> yeah. and generally allowing a full complement of sexual activities. Yeah. That said, we as we covered in a, a really early episode, the question of what is sex? Boy, we could all stand. I. It, Every time I come back to this question, I am enthralled with how deep it can take us into every aspect of pleasure yeah. and connection in this way. So, I mean, you're the researcher, correct? But correct me if I'm wrong. There are many answers to that question as there are people. Yeah. I have now asked the question, what is sex, to hundreds of people at this point, and I've yet to get you know, a cohesive answer. Um, all of the experts I know agree that the best we can have is an answer for a particular context, for a particular mm. set of people. Mm -hmm. We cannot say that we have some sort of universal decided upon thing that is, this is sex. So right off the bat, you've got to define what you mean when you say we want full swap or we want soft swap or we want to have sex or we want to do this. We need to get more specific. Yeah. Because I don't think... So you're going to need vocabulary. Yes. What does it mean? What does it mean, for instance, is does sex include oral sex? Does it include mm -hmm. um, does it include hand jobs? Does does full sex include fingering? Does full sex what like what do you mean? Yeah. So, so you're get asking really about boundaries, clear. and right away the boundaries are of sex, not sex. What uh, what counts? What, what counts? Yeah. Another thing that comes up right away for a lot of people. When we're talking about having sex with multiple partners at the same time, we have to remember that not everybody may be doing the same things at the same time. So questions around like <laughs> fairness, fairness and playtime and like what we imagine we want may not even be possible once we get in the scenario. Mm -hmm. So the imagining can actually be a lot of the fun. And I think that I see what you, you and I have found yeah. that over and over again. The lead up. Don't forget about the, the anticipation. Yeah, the anticipation, the the talking about what you think you're going to do and how it's going to go. and Or what you wish you could or do. Or what you wish you could do. And sometimes that is the whole game. A lot of people find that after they've played with other people a little bit, they find that, in fact, it's it's a fair amount of emotional effort um, and logistical effort to make it work. And so it's fun 
but sometimes it's just not really worth it to like regularly engage in yep. putting this into so, their lives. So you get enough practical experience to feed your fantasies and, and you're good. And you that, use that's them in your fantasies. And, and some people great. find that once they go out and start experimenting this way, that in fact, the fantasy, the anticipation is 99% of it. Mm -hmm. And so they continue to build on the fantasy of it uh, without ever really needing to actualize it. That's fine too. There's, there is no, there's no one way that this works best. It's going to be an experiment. Yep. However, I have another, a follow-up set of thoughts around some questions that are important. What exactly is it that your relationship is right now? And mm. what is it that you're doing? So let me clarify that, make it clearer. Um, currently, if you're in a monogamous relationship, what is your agreement? Is your agreement to sexual exclusivity? And what exactly does that mean? Is this, is this an opening of your relationship? Or is this an experiment with a very finite, defined, and like we're going to experiment for this evening? What's the scope of what you're what's doing? What's the scope of what mm -hmm. you're doing? Because what, what we're talking about here, I mean, there are lots of words for it, but swinging, you know, we can kick it old school back to the back to the 60s and 70s, back to the this the word swinging still works. Yep. Um, that has it has a limited scope. It's limited to a particular episode, generally speaking, yep. or a particular play party, or even people who develop relationships where they swap partners, but they keep some emotional parameters, or at least they attempt to keep uh, emotional parameters. There's a limit to what you can govern when it comes to emotions. That's for real. I think that a great place to start is what it is that you have now and, and how this might change it. We can't actually predict everything, but we can at least put the forethought into, hey, what do you think this is going to bring up for you? Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do in order to feel secure with each other before, during, and after? That That's key. Like um, whatever it is you're doing, However it works out. Yeah. What are you going to do before to arrange and agree on what's going to happen? Then after, what are you going to do about whatever it was that happened? So one of the early examples that I can think of, um, you and I played with a couple and it was really fun. We had a great time, but it didn't go the way we had planned. Mm -hmm. So we had set out for the evening thinking that we would full swap, but in the same room and yeah, just figured, and it was fine. And emotionally we were in a good space. Yep. We had negotiated for our aftercare. Aftercare means literally how will each of you want to be cared for afterwards? What, how will you deal with whatever? There will whatever? be feelings. feelings. You'll have feelings and about physical what went. care. Even like that was Who's fantastic. Who's going to bring the water bottles? Who's going to bring important. the water bottles? <laughs> and the aftercare includes, that was amazing. And you want to tell somebody, you want to talk about it. How much Being sharing there will for, there be? How much how sharing, details? right? Because not everybody wants to hear everything. Right. And not every partner wants to have their stuff shared with your other partner. Right. There are a lot of questions in here. Yeah. But I think that the basics of saying, this is how I would like it to go, we found out right away. That doesn't mean that's how it'll go. Yep. We had a perfectly lovely time, I mm. think. Yeah. But it certainly didn't go. Didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Not the way you Not hoped. the way I wanted it to go. So I got a bunch of what I was hoping for. Though I, I did run up against some stuff. I came up against some of my, um, well, this has happened over and over again. Um, women who are into playing with girls in order to impress the, the guy they're with. Mm -hmm. So I call that performance buy. Um, it's fine if that's what I know I'm getting, but. I, I have feels about it. It can be again. Can it's be really about your expectations and, expectations and hopes. Yeah. For... When I feel like I'm being used a little bit for performance, it can feel a little jarring because I I am very. And if you were looking for more of a connection, women. yeah, you're, that's that's trouble. Um, I've I've dealt with that since by by actually naming it and just calling it out and asking the women like, so what is this for you? And and that helps a and lot. I think that's an important point. Remember that, so there's the two of you in a relationship and a third person comes along as a person 
Yeah. They've got, they're bringing their own stuff into this situation. And remember that um, you don't know what their story is in this and they don't know yours. And they may not be So there's be a willing... conversation that you could have there. Right. They may not be willing to share all the details of their, their emotional story and all of that, but it is worth asking. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, how could we best care for you? Yes. Especially when we're talking about inviting a third person to join a couple. There is yep. a there is a, an etiquette to this yeah to to ensuring that this person who will then walk away from the couple and and not have that same kind of aftercare necessarily there's there's an etiquette there's a way to be a person there's a way, yeah. <laughs> there's a way to be a person um i have not enjoyed when the the aftercare was basically see ya yeah not cool yeah that's just not cool don't do that don't be that don't don't be those people so you were talking about Mis when things didn't go missed expectations. Missed expectations. Yeah. So there can be a lot of anticipation and excitement yeah. about like, wow, we're gonna do this thing. And then and then. So um real life examples. Real life examples. <laughs> um I found um yep, lost my erection completely. Um sex happening around me, beautiful people. I wanted in. Okay, sorry. That was a very funny Didn't pun. Mean nice to job. say that I wanted <laughs> part of what was going on, and uh, yeah, my penis was like, yeah, no, no. We want to get to know these people more, or something. I don't out, even know what it was. Your penis but, is quite demisexual. Very, yeah. Uh, demisexual meaning that it really <laughs> prefers to have an emotional relationship. Yep. The, with the people. Um, the arousal even though in your head i can see you you're like yeah. you're all in you're yep. like yes i'm here but the physical oh. arousal <laughs> is for me linked to um intimacy. A, a, an intimacy an, yeah. an emotional and intellectual intimacy mm. um so that was a surprise in those scenarios yeah, so we're and, talking about a scenario where yeah. we don't really know these people very well we know them well enough to have set up our safer sex protocol we'll get to that in a mo in a moment and to have been you know polite and kind and right. gotten to know each other a little bit but and not the, a connection no and the point was to have sex that's what we were getting together for so there wasn't expected to be a whole lot of jibber jabber beforehand <laughs> right so um for me without the opportunity to oh you need jibber jabber under i need jibber jabber i don't like the way <laughs> that sounds but um uh without the opportunity to get to understand the people um i had trouble um, situational impotence, I guess. Yeah. And, um, and okay. Which I mean, it didn't have to be the end of the world. No, First no, no, off, no. What is sex? What is sex? There's a lot of other stuff to do, which you have found. You have wound up being a superstar at all those other things. By to necessity. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also by, but because I also like also those other things very much. Right. And... But what do you do with the feelings? Cause I remember, especially in the earlier days, that being a challenge because you needed a lot of aftercare oh, afterwards. So much. Yeah. And we didn't know to negotiate for that yep. beforehand. So we learned quickly and, you know, the hard way that if that happened, you needed yep. to feel like cared for and not reduced to, yeah. Well, I guess it is. It's the real, it's the depth of that word impotent. The, um, there's so much pressure. Yes. Heteronormative. So, yeah, that's what I was um, going to touch street on. Street pressure to yeah. perform like, with your penis. Perform, as, like that. That's the as thing. As though right? if I didn't have a hard cock, I wasn't of value in that situation. It's ridiculous, but it's also. Which also was not borne out. No. <laughs> at all. But, but, it's, but it's everywhere. That message is everywhere. And women have, uh, fem have female-bodied people have have other so issues. So people, no matter what so. your your body is, there are going to be cultural norms that interact poorly with some of the stuff around. Yep. Bodies, which you just said, female bodies. That's I not did what not you mean to, to say, say that at all. I meant to um, give you a chance to do it again. Thank you very much. That's been actually weighing on my mind. So um, people with vulvas. people with vulvas, yes. Um, yeah, there are expectations for people who own penises, people who own vulvas, yep. people who have varied ranges of genitals, that when those expectations aren't met, yep. now the internalized pressure to have 
met those expectations. By the way, no one actually set. They were no. sort of amorphous and exist in the culture. Yeah. But realistically speaking, um, yeah, it doesn't always go the way you thought it was going to go. So we found that we needed to plan in a certain amount of emotional caretaking afterward that we didn't know we were going to need to go negotiate for before. So this, I'm going to go back and sort of review. Right up front, there are some things you have to talk about. You have to talk about, are you actually opening your relationship or is this a one-time experiment? What if the one-time experiment turns into an opening of right. the relationship? Are, are yep. you open to that or is that a deal breaker? Let's also next talk about what are our safer sex agreements? There is no such thing as safe sex. There is only safer sex. That's fine. We just have to remember that there are things to do. And just because we hit a certain age bracket doesn't mean that those things go away. I don't care what age you <laughs> nope. are. Condoms and barrier methods are the only way we have to protect against most STIs. We need them regardless of whether we're doing other things. Um, men who are having sex with men can also do things like take prep. Um, mm -hmm. And there, so there are things to do. We can get really specific about that. I can I put some links in the show notes. Negotiate your safer sex agreements. You like you need to get clear. You also need to get tested. That's a that's yeah. imperative. Go to your doctor. Data. Find out. Get a full panel and have that available to share with the people that you are about to engage with. Right? You're going to want to know that information from them. You need to be able to present it. This is not a big deal. You go. You get the panel done. You have the test results. You need to be able to present it. And if it's not offered, you need to be willing to ask for it. Right. And that awkward conversation, if you think of it this way, it's actually a wonderful way to level set on whether the people that you're playing with are mature enough to engage with. Yeah. If a person can't have a conversation about safer sex, can they really have the emotional conversations that might need to be had in case feelings get hurt? Can they can they consent fully? Can can they allow you to consent? Can they allow you to set your boundaries? A safer sex conversation is a great way to start yep. these more nuanced conversations. Um, and I think it's safe to say that I feel like I have to be able to walk away. Like if somebody's not willing to share yep. that information, I have to be willing to say, okay, this isn't the right match for me. Okay. Um, next, I would say I, I like people to get into what are our emotional agreements? What is it that I feel like is an, my emotional risk? Because yeah. we talk about safer sex and we're thinking about sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy, right? Well, we have ways to protect. We have condoms, we have dental dams, we have birth control, all, we have all these options, we have, but what do we do to protect ourselves? I could make great big yeah, giant big, air quotes. Big old air quotes um, that. Protect ourselves from emotional fallout. You're going to have feelings of some kind, and if they interact with how you're feeling about your partner or how what your it can get really connected together pretty quick. Now, here's the thing, though. I think that this is a huge, I, I, I think that this is absolutely the reason why we, our relationship works the way it does, because we have these kinds of complicated conversations around, wow, how would I feel if you turned your attention away to this other person? How do I feel when it actually happens? And what happens when I see you kissing someone else? What happens when I feel myself attracted to someone else. Having the conversations around this, um, well, I experience it as a, a, a profound deepening of our relating. Oh, yes. And that has less to do with the actions and more to do with the way we mm -hmm. talk about it, the way we caretake for each other, and the way we allow each other to be separate individuals. You yes. having your experience yep. of of sort of sexual letdown yep. during those those initial, especially those initial few yeah. times that we went out to play. Yeah, I had a great time. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. And had had you not allowed me, you, like if you had asked me to pretend 
If you would imply yeah, through your right. emotions and that I needed to pretend that I'd had a bad time too. Which yeah. brings us back to the concept of fairness as though we both have to have the same kind of time. So if I've had a bad time, you have to pretend that your great time wasn't. And yeah, no fun. Let's That's not, no fun. We don't... So I'm going to bring the, the time. Like, let's, let's go back to if the point is to have fun, to add some some erotic dimension to the relating okay well let's come back to that let's let's return to that yeah things may not go the way we want them to but can we find the fun even in that yeah after the, the first one is standing out to me so we meet a couple yep i had a great time you didn't really connect very much with either of them um, so it just wasn't, it was actually a little boring, I think. For I you. was so scared and bored. Yeah. And then it, it, it <laughs> actually got boring. I couldn't do anything. And, yeah, I was, it, and, and, and then, and then something else happened afterward. You and I connected yes. after Yeah, we had sex yep. and all the erotic energy that had been, yes. that was yep. missing, that had sort yeah. of been sucked out of the room, the vacuum rushed back in to fill up the space. Yep. And there was a whole day, the following day, that whole day. Oh, that's right. It was on fire. Yes. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. Um, but that wouldn't have been possible if you had stayed locked in that sense of wanting fairness or yep. like yep. petulance or, or yeah. feeling let down. Yeah. That was, that was that's a big thing. deal. I didn't even need to try to enforce fairness for it to cause a problem. All I needed to do was just stay petulant because petulant sex... I'm going to just say, I mean, I can't say this is a universal truth by any means because there's nothing universal about sex, but generally not sexy. I don't find it to be sexy. You I'm definitely sure, maybe, don't. Maybe somebody Could out be. there has a Could petulance be. kink. It's not um, me. That's not me. But it wasn't going to work for us. So I want people to be making safer sex agreements. I'm hoping that people make emotional agreements. Yes. And then I hope people make flexibility agreements. Got to, because it's not going to go the way you think it is. No, you you can't, like, you just can't. So you have to be ready Assume to... Assume you live in a multiverse. It's not going to work yep. out. It's going to be whatever. And so how will you be flexible with each other and allow yourselves the grace to come back together and to have had differing experiences and yet to just know that this was part of your adventure and whether it was spectacular or mediocre or a real letdown well how do you how when where how are you going to get yourselves back to a space where you can debrief about this yeah. share about it and use it as a new piece of your right. story whatever the experience is that you have how can you use it to you know, grow your relationship, yeah. grow yourselves each individually and let that bring you together? And so the last question that this listener had asked, I want to address specifically. Um, what happens if, if you have differing ideas of like what you each want? You know, mm -hmm. who gets to decide in a relationship? So let's say I want to be able to have whatever I want in the room. I don't want to have any limitations on activities. Right. Imagine yeah. that. And you are thinking, well, I'd like there to be some limitations, maybe mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I, well, a common thing that comes up is people are, are, they'll say, I don't want um, any penis and vagina sex, or I don't want kissing something like that. They'll pick some sort of broad category. Yeah. What do you do? Who gets to decide who gets to set that boundary? I think this is one of the reasons it's, why this, even just as a thought experiment, is so juicy. It's, it's such a, a juicy fun. topic. That because right there. So is it is it the person who wants the thing? Is it the person who doesn't want the thing? Or do you just lean on the relationship to answer the question? Do you treat for the relationship you? Yeah. as an autonomous as an creature? Autonomous creature with its, with own, its own rights. Rules. We have decided long, long, long ago, the sort of premise of our relationship is that each of us set our own sexual boundaries yep. and then there's a space between us where we negotiate and we we attempt and this is not always easy we attempt to remember that i get to decide what i want to do you get to decide what you want to do and sometimes the thing i decide for myself is going to mean that you have a boundary 
for yourself. So an example right. yep. would be um, if I decided to have non-barrier protected sex with a partner and came home and said, so that's what I did. Well, your boundary okay, then mark your is calendar then because it's going to be six months. It's six months. You need two tests. Two you need tests. two rounds of STI testing over spread across over six months, and that's just that's just a reasonable re repercussion. It's, it's not it's punishment. Just a that's just a practical response. response. Yeah. Um, and you you don't have to feel that way, but since that's our agreement, well, that's what happens. That doesn't mean it's the only way we could handle it, but. Allowing for each other to truly be individuals for us has meant saying, okay, <laughs> you really are yeah. an, an individual with your own rights to you your sexual are self. Autonomous and... and so we have to negotiate what works for us from that stance. Yeah. That's not... That's not always what I see. In fact, it's frequently not what I see um, in clients, in friends, um, in and certainly in every media outlet oh, yes. ever. Yeah. Um, what we often see is instead the person who want, who feels, who expresses a feeling of insecurity gets to set the rule. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about jealousy, I talk about how if you point your fingers outward, and you say, you need to do something different yeah. so that I don't feel jealous. We'll get to jealousy. I'm going to do a whole thing. But any feeling works this way. Any action works this way. You need to change this so I don't feel this thing. Well, the trouble in there is that while, while the request may be uh, tenderhearted, it may, may even be designed to bring you back together, it all... It, it actually robs me when I do that. It robs me of the of the sense of wait. I can I can actually I can take care of my sense of security mm. inside. Uh -huh. I can shore up my self worth and remember that you aren't making me feel something. You might be doing something that leads me down a path where this is what where I'm what I'm feeling, and now I get to choose what I do. Right. Um. A long time ago, a teacher told me that, you know, my feelings were the the water flowing through the faucet, but I'm the faucet. Mm -hmm. It's a good reminder for this. Yeah. So just because I'm having a feeling doesn't mean you're making me feel it. And so we we stay away from the idea that the that the negotiation has to be fair, and we, yes, or that it has to be. Mm, that the person who wants the least holds all the cards. Yep. And yeah. this is tricky. This is really tricky because, of course, consent matters so much. <sighs> consent matters. It matters so yep. much. It, it is. It so is I know crucial. we're getting close to the edge where people may say, well, but they can't do something I didn't consent to. And this is where now I want you to uh, like pull back to, the, right? The boundaries so you between need to have people. Your boundaries yeah. right and understand the boundaries you've put around yourself and say so if you behave in this particular way here is how i this is how i'm going to take care of my needs yeah and that could lead the consequences then of a set of actions can definitely lead to a place where you no longer agree on some of like the, uh, the more basic, the basic yeah. you know, day to day parts of your life so I don't say this to scare you off. I think that, in fact, um, having what I think of as playful sex, like sex where I'm I'm playing with other people um, and I'm not necessarily involved in emotional relationships with them, I think it can be a blast. And I think that a lot of times feelings enter into the picture when yeah. we didn't plan for them to. Even if those feelings aren't about two people falling in love, sometimes it's just like the sweet, the swept away feeling of like, wow, I'm so enamored of this new person yeah. or watching our partner and, and being totally knocked over by the fact that it, that looks super hot, but oh my gosh, I can't believe it's happening. And now I'm not actually feeling good about it. There's, there's so much that can happen. And, um, I, my, my strong recommendation is to prepare to confront parts of you that you haven't 
had to. It's a new experience. Mm. If mm-hmm. so, the the um, the listener is saying, thinking about doing this for the first time. This is a new experience. Expect to see parts of yourself come up that you didn't expect, and some of them you might not like. I mean, prepare for the unknown prepare, and the unknowable. And, yep. And so, how can we do that? How do we prepare for the unknown and the unknowable? Your suggestion of um, of of planning for flexibility is important. Yeah. Like prepare with the idea that you don't know what's going to come up, but you're going to be okay. How um, be open as possible is my suggestion. Open to hearing be each other out. Be open to hearing each other out. To sitting um, with the discomfort. Some uncomfortable stuff might come up. That's yeah. not necessarily a bad thing. Some of those all. early experiences that we had, and actually a recent experience we've had, where there's this sort of discomfort that has entered the room yep. because a sexual experience didn't go the way we wanted it to. Yeah, but then breakthrough in our relationship yeah. because we sat with the discomfort and then we talked it through. Yep. So the, the twelve years in, whole new aspects yeah. of our relationship open up. Yep. And the and the petulance that I brought to you after that first time, you had many options on how you could have responded to that, and you were, um, as I recall, fairly annoyed that that was the energy that I was bringing into. I was a time when you would had a a great time. It was good, but you could also feel my my uh, my my step back in that. So so there I am, not having really participated in the experience as much as we were expecting again the expectations and then and then having these uh, downer feelings afterward but you were still open to it you 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 saw what i was feeling gave me some space to feel it pointed out how it was affecting you and that was key so you didn't just pretend it wasn't happening. Don't pretend it's not, not happening. Whatever the it. feelings yeah. you have are, say them to the the person involved, whether it's your partner or the person you brought in. Express them so that you can deal with them. Pretending they didn't happen, pretending that I wasn't petulant was just going to make me petulant again next time. Yeah. But this and way I could work with for the record, it took about five times to get to really get. Oh yeah, it took a lot for that. Me. And I don't honestly, I I don't go into any, I don't go into any uh, situation, any any new sexual situation. I I don't go into expecting that I'm going to be fully sexually functioning. I assume I'm going to have to improvise. Improvise. Just improvise. Just improvise. The, I think the that when we're talking about this topic, it's important to remember that. We, we don't know what we're getting into and that's the whole fun of it. Yeah. That is the whole yep. fun of it. So you said expect to confront parts of yourself you didn't know were there. Yeah. You may find yourself confronting internalized homophobia that you didn't even know was there. You're like, I love this. Everything's, oh, wait, turns out I have all kinds of parts of myself I wish I didn't have. Mm-hmm. You may have jealousy that you didn't think you had. You may come up against envy. Um that you didn't realize was there. You may actually not feel very secure at all about your relationship, or you may find that you have body insecurity come up that you didn't realize was going to kick you around. The, the feelings coming up aren't the problem. In my experience, the feelings coming up are actually your opportunity to move forward to, again, to use your, your, your relationship, as an individuating experience. This is yeah. the accelerator. This is the the thing that propels you forward and can propel you in a direction where you grow with your partner through the complexities of a messy time. Yeah. Relationships are messy. Yeah, that is good news because you have the opportunity for growth and for fun. And, for and fun. if the stuff that you're playing, if what you're doing isn't fun, if you wind up having sex that's not as much ex- as it's not as exciting as you had hoped, or if some feelings that you didn't anticipate come up, it, you know, I mean, that happens, that happens in any happens sex life. <laughs> that just happens, yeah. right? So we can also just say, just because one experience isn't awesome, 
doesn't mean another won't be great. So you yeah. also don't have to write it off just because it doesn't go perfectly the first time. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's worth mentioning before we wrap up that there's also the logistics to think about. Oh, yeah. Um, it, there's just, there's logistics. Who's going, like, who's going to set up the space? Who's making contact with people? Who's making sure that the other parties are feeling well cared for? Who's having the safer sex conversations? It should be everyone involved. It's, there is no, there is no, like, recipe you have to follow, but err on the side of more communication, mm -hmm. not less, and presume nothing. Ask. Ask, ask, ask. Ask, ask, ask. Very important. Yeah. There's, there are so many more details. We could get into this some more. We if could. people have refining questions, I would love sure. to hear them. Feel free to email me, jolie at joliehamilton.com. And we can entertain some more issues along these lines. And like I said, we'll pick up and talk about some of the feelings, some of the big feelings that can come up around this in a future episode yeah. coming up right along. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love, is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>